Hi there, this is Caitlin Porter from the Mongoose Enablement Team. Welcome to part six of the Mongoose Hello World training series. In part five, we built our property class extensions and component classes that will be reused later on when we build our store portal. In today's video, we will introduce form scripts and we'll build a chart to display key data. We'll also lay some groundwork for our store portal, which includes importing images and expanding on our theme. Let's start by opening Mongoose and reopening our orders form from the list of most recently used forms. Hit refresh to query the data. In the previous video, we created an order total using a derived field. The problem with this is that it only updates after save. What if we wanted to update immediately after we change the count? We can use a form script to achieve this. While Mongoose promotes development with minimal coding, we're still able to add code in a variety of locations. Click the designer icon from the toolbar to open our orders form in design mode. Set the editing scope to site default and hit OK. Then hit OK again. After the form opens, expand the behavior section in the properties panel. You'll notice here you have the option to select the script language of the form. The default is Visual Basic, but you have the option to change it to C Sharp here. Let's leave it as the default of Visual Basic and let's open the built-in script editor by clicking the pencil icon in the top of the properties panel and hitting edit form script. Highlight the methods go here section and let's replace it with the following script. This method is first passing in the order count and item costs as parameters into the method. It will then change it to a decimal format and will perform the calculation. Once the calculation is complete, it will update the property on the form. Take a second to pause the video here and type out this script on your form. Once you're done, hit OK to return to your form and then hit Save. Now, we want to create an event that will trigger that form script whenever the item is changed or the count is changed. Let's first create our event. Open the Details pane and then navigate to the Event Handlers tab. Click the New button at the bottom. Let's name our event handler Calc Order Total then hit OK. Expand the response section and let's change the type to form script method. Then click on the ellipsis next to the parameters field to select our script. Under name, hit the drop list and you should see a list of all the scripts attached to the form. Select our calc order total script. Now we need to pass in the parameters that the method needs. Type in p open parentheses count close parentheses comma p open parentheses itms cost close parentheses. This will pass in our count and cost properties to the method. Hit OK, and now we need to attach our event to something. We want to run this whenever the count or item is changed. So select our item combo box. Expand the events section in the properties panel, and since we want to trigger this on data change. Click the Data Change drop-down and select our event there. We also want to trigger the same event whenever the count is changed. So click your Count Edit and set the Data Change event to Calc Order Total. Save your form and let's reopen it in runtime mode to test it out. Hit Refresh to query the data, then try changing the count or the item and notice that the order total will now update immediately. Now let's make sure we apply the same event to the grid columns as well. Switch back to the Design Mode tab. Select the Grid component and click the Edit Grid Columns button. Navigate to the Item Grid column, and under the Events section, select our Calc Order Total for the Data Change event. Do the same for the Count Grid column as well. Hit OK and save your form. Reopen the form in the Runtime Mode tab, and test this out by changing the count or the item from the Grid column. Now that we have covered most of the basics when it comes to developing the back end of an application, let's switch gears and learn more about designing and developing the user interface. Mongoose has many components that allow us to build graphic-oriented UIs. In this next part, let's build a basic chart that will display key data from our orders table. Switch back to the Design Mode tab and close your orders form. Hit the new form definition icon from the toolbar to open up the form wizard selector. Select Classic for the category and Grid Only for the wizard, then hit OK. Let's name it Orders Chart, and let's use our Orders IDO for the data source. Hit Next, then step through the wizard accepting the defaults, and then hit Finish. 
When the form opens, we see that since we chose grid only mode for the form type, we only have a grid which spans the entire length of the form. The grid is only for debugging in this case, so after we get everything set up, we're going to hide it. For now, let's shrink the grid by selecting it and clicking and dragging the corner in. Then we can reposition the grid anywhere on our form. I'm going to move mine towards the bottom. Click on the Form tab at the bottom of the Properties panel, and let's set the initial command to Refresh so it queries the orders immediately when it opens. Then go to the Toolbox, grab a Chart component, and draw it onto your form. Next, let's bind some data to the chart so it has something to display. With the chart still selected, expand the Data Source section in the Properties panel. Set the binding type to Chart. Then, select the ellipsis next to the binding field to specify the chart settings. For the chart data at the bottom, select Dir Order Total and add it to the right. Then select Order Number as our property for the x-axis labels. There are many other chart settings that you can set here in the Chart Settings dialog. However, we're just going to leave the defaults for now. Hit OK to return to the form. Now let's hide our grid. Select the grid component, expand the behavior section in the properties panel, and set hidden to true. Save your form and let's test it out. Switch back to the runtime mode tab and open your form. And just like that, when the form opens, we now have a graphical representation of our orders data. There are many other types of charts and gauges that Mongo supplies that you can use to display key data. You can even use it to create dashboards in your application. In the next video, we're going to build out our store portal. But before we do that, let's import the images and create the theme classes that we'll need for the portal. Switch back to the Design Mode tab and close your orders chart form. Then select Edit, Image to open the Images dialog. You can use this dialog to import images to the form's database. This makes it possible to transport the image file with the form and eliminates the need to call the image from an external location. Select the New button and import the three images that are included in the Hello World Graphics folder. This folder can be found on the Mongoose portal. The Import button will allow you to overwrite an existing image in the library. You can also use the Export button to export any image. Hit OK and save your changes. Next. Let's create some theme classes in our Hello World theme that we can use when we're building out our store portal. Select Edit, then Theme, and select Hello World. Hit the Edit button in the top right. I want to start by setting a font at the form level, so every component on the form will inherit this font. Select the Form Tree element, and for the font family, select or type in Tahoma. Next, I want to set a theme class for the Flex Layout component that will set the background color blue. To do so, drill into the Form Tree element and then select Flex Layout. Give it a class name in the bottom, Blue Background, and then hit Add. Once you hit Add, the tree will refresh, so you'll have to go back into the component and select it. Reselect Blue Background, and let's set the background color. Type in Pound FF5CC. 6C7, or select the ellipsis to pick a color from the style editor. Hit OK, and next, let's create a static class. Click on the static component below, and let's add a class called White Header. After you hit Add, the tree will refresh. Navigate back to your White Header class. Set the font size to 16, and set bold equal to true. Then select Normal State from the Categories, and let's set the foreground color. Click the ellipsis, hit Solid, and let's accept a default of white. Hit OK. Let's add one more class to the Static component. Select Static, and then add the class name Header. After you hit Add, the tree will refresh again. Navigate back to your Header class. Set the font size to 16, and set Bold to True. Once you're done, hit OK until you get back to your form, and then save your changes. Before we wrap up, let's stop and take a look back at everything we have covered up until now. In Part 1, we touched on navigating using the Explorer menu. The Explorer allows for custom shortcuts and folders that can group together forms. You can also use it to set what forms you want to open automatically when a user logs into the system. 
These folders can utilize the built-in security to only allow certain users or groups access to select folders. We created an IDEO project that was used to group together all of our IDEOs. This can be used in conjunction with the IDEO export wizard to export all of the IDEOs in a particular project. We reviewed how to access the user preferences window and talked about unloading the IDEO metadata with forms. Here's where the user can set the application theme as well. We got started with development by building out the customer's facility using the new data maintenance wizard. This created our table, IDEO, and form all in one step. We then started some basic development on our customer's form using the Mongoose web designer. In part two, we got you introduced to the inheritance model, which is one of the key principles of the Mongoose framework. This allows us to create reusable classes that can be used throughout an application with a single point of maintenance. We got started building property classes that held various data attributes. Those attributes were inherited when we applied them to our unit of measure and items facilities. We then built onto our application using the new data maintenance wizard by creating our unit of measure facility followed by our items facility. In part three, we briefly covered the flow of data in Mongoose, how when refresh is clicked an XML is sent to the IDEO runtime service where it's processed and sent to SQL and returned in the form of an update collection XML. This is all handled instinctively by Mongoose and requires no setup from the user. We covered the basics on filtering in Mongoose and how to use a wildcard character, a less than or greater than to filter specific criteria, as well as how to combine filters. We explored the different types of initial command actions that can control what happens when the form opens. We also learned how to turn on specific diagnostics messages in our user preferences and view the diagnostics panel in action as events were triggered on the form. We also got started working with the event system and how to intercept some of the standard Mongoose events as well as creating our own custom event. Lastly, we introduced variables, which are mechanisms for storing data needed at runtime. We introduced a Mongoose substitution keyword to store a property value into our variable. These substitution keywords are interpreted by Mongoose when the event was triggered. In part four, we introduced how to add a column and property to an existing table. Previously, we used the new data maintenance wizard to create these, but doing it manually allows us to make changes to existing tables and IDOs. We use the SQL tables core form to add our new picture column, and then the IDO properties core form to add the picture property to our items IDO. Next, we worked with our new binary picture property to import an image for each of our items. We created an event that utilized the standard binary value action import event. We also created our hello world theme and applied it from the user preferences window. We also created our first theme class that styled our import button. We used the IDEO collections core form to create a table join. This allowed us to create a join property from the unit of measure table to the items table. Next, we created our first property class extension, which are types of global objects that can override IDEO property classes. This allowed us to create a right-click menu so the user can drill down to the unit of measure form. Lastly, we created some property classes that were used when we created our orders facility. With the use of property classes, this made creating our orders facility fast and consistent by inheriting the data attributes straight from the property classes. In part five, we expanded on our orders facility by joining it with our items and customers tables. This allowed us to create joined properties from those tables onto the orders IDO. We also created our first derived property, which is an unbound SQL expression used to perform calculations, subqueries, or calls to SQL functions. We use this to calculate our total order cost. Then we created right-click menus for drilling into the customers and items forms using property class extensions. These extensions will inherit anywhere that property class is being used. We introduce validators and how they can be used to not only validate the values of a component, but to also set the customer name and address immediately upon data change. And we followed that up by introducing component classes, another type of global object that lets us bundle together sets of attributes. This allowed us to package up our validator along with a list source into a reusable component class. And in today's video, we got you introduced to form scripts in Mongoose. We were able to create a script that performed a calculation and then updated the property. We then attached that script to a custom event and triggered it on the data change event. 
We started working with the chart component and use this to display key data in our orders table. Then, we got you familiar with the Mongoose image library and how it can be used to import images to the forms database. This makes it possible to transport image files with the form and eliminates the need to call the image from an external location. Lastly, we laid some of the groundwork that will be used in the last part of this series. We built out some theme classes that will be used when we build out our customer portal. That wraps up today's video. In the next video, we'll get you started on building out our customer portal form. We'll introduce you to flex forms and flex layout components, which are necessary to create responsive forms. For more tutorials and documentation, check out the Mongoose portal at mongoose.info.com. Thanks for watching.